The journey began six weeks ago. Is this the entrance? When we arrived at the Foxconn gates filled with fascination and dread. Can you switch your mic on, please? There we go. It was an intriguing chance to witness the creation of the MacBook, the iPhone, and the iPad. The products that have fans sleeping on sidewalks in anticipation. Rushing stores to buy another model of a gadget they probably already own. A devotion that turned Steve Jobs' garage startup into a company more valuable than Exxon. But while Apple is among the most beloved brands in the world, we came expecting to find the kind of horror stories that have demonized Foxconn. My name is Bill. Nice to meet you. With over a million employees, Apple's top supplier also works for Intel, Nintendo, Dell, and many others. But while they build 40% of the world's electronics, relatively few Americans knew their name until 2010, when nine Foxconn workers jumped to their deaths in a span of three months. Suicide nets are still a reminder of that horror. An explosion hit a Foxconn plant in Chengdu. And also fresh are the memories of two explosions last year, which killed four and injured 77. Did it take something that severe to make you rethink how you treated your workers here? I think absolutely. While Apple's been doing internal audits since 2006, the drumbeat of bad press, even allegations of child labor, led to a new era of openness. They finally revealed the names of most of their suppliers and joined the Fair Labor Association. Hello, I'm Bill Weir. Hi, I'm Julia. Hi. And we were there when the head of that watchdog group began an unprecedented investigation. How do you know they're not putting on a show for you if they know you're coming? I expect them to put on a show for us. That's normal. But over the next couple of days, everything will surface. What goes through your mind when you do the same thing all day like this? While I met plenty of Foxconn workers willing to complain about long hours, low pay, and bad cafeteria food. You can be honest. We knew there was only so much an American with a camera could uncover here. So we anxiously awaited the results of that audit, including the anonymous survey of over 35,000 workers on, get this, iPads. Good to see you again, several weeks later. And just a few hours ago, the FLA posted their findings. As Americans understand the term, would you define Foxconn as a sweatshop? No, it's a very modern facility. Did you find any evidence of child labor? We did not. None? No child labor, no forced labor. So what are the most egregious violations being made there? Over time, over time. With an insatiable demand for new gadgets over here. It's a stampede. And a massive hunger for steady work over there. Forced overtime is one of the most pervasive workers' rights problems in China. The law here says no one can work more than 49 hours a week. But no one actually obeys that law. Apple's official limit is 60 hours a week. So, six days a week, a Foxconn worker like Zhou Xiaoying will spend 10 hours a day filing Apple logos on the back of iPad cases 3,000 times a shift. What are you thinking about while you're working? A lot of times, I think about how tired I am, she tells me. They get two hour-long meal breaks when they march single file into a massive canteen and pay around 70 cents for a plate of meat and rice. If they eat fast enough, they can catch a few winks back at their spot on the line. So how does that happen for forced overtime? Uh, you, you think your shift is ending, the boss says, hold on, you're gonna spend the night here? Question is, are people doing it voluntarily? Do they have a say? If they refuse overtime, are they gonna face any kind of a recrimination? Everybody we talk to said they wish they made more money. I mean, that's a universal sentiment, I imagine. Right. But what about there? What, is it fair what these folks are making? They paid about 20% above the minimum wage, the legal minimum wage. We asked them if they feel that it's fair, and the majority said yes, they felt it was fair. But they also felt it wasn't enough to meet their basic needs. And here's the big headline. According to the FLA, Foxconn has agreed to sweeping changes. By July of next year, they promise that workers will only have to put in 49 hours a week while taking home the same amount of money as they do working 60 hours now. But in order to keep up with demand, that means Foxconn will have to build entire new lines and dorms and cafeterias and hire tens of thousands of new workers. Is Apple going to eat that cost? Is it going on to the customer? 
Social responsibility has a cost. Obviously, Foxconn will absorb some. The buyers, because it's not just Apple, it's all of the other electronics companies as well who have to absorb some of this. And I think we need to be ready to, to put our money where our mouths are. Steve Jobs never visited his Chinese factories, but in a telling move, his replacement Tim Cook was at one yesterday. In a statement tonight, Apple said, we appreciate the work the FLA has done to assess conditions at Foxconn, and we fully support their recommendations. Our team has been working for years to educate workers, improve conditions, and make Apple's supply chain a model for the industry. The company boasts that they have educated over a million assembly line workers of their rights. But other watchdog groups think they can do much better. Uh, in 2006, it had a, did a similar investigation with a group called Verite and found you know, mass scale overtime violations and promised to clean it up and it's now been six years and nothing has happened. So you know, I hope that they're serious this time. How do you know they're going to do this? There are two reasons I know they'll do this. One is that we will monitor it and verify it and report publicly. But secondly, they've made this commitment publicly now. And you guys and the consumers and the external stakeholders are all going to watch to see if they actually deliver.